Welcome to the Blending In Podcast, where we chat with innovative educators who are integrating ed tech. I'm your host, Ashley Azarlu, and I'm so glad you're listening in today. As teachers, we don't often get the chance to see into the classrooms of our colleagues, but by listening today, you'll get an auditory peek into the classroom of Mr. John Murrow from Diamond Valley Middle School in Hemet, California. Hi, John. Hey, what's up, everybody? John here. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm already transitioning into my podcasting Murrow self. <laughs> so John is actually a part-time podcaster, too. So he kind of knows the drill here. Um, but John, in addition to podcasting, can you tell him a little bit about who you are and what you do in the classroom? All right. Well, uh, my name is John Murrow, and this is, I believe, my seventh year at Diamond Valley Middle School. Yes, I'm insane for loving middle school, but I actually really, really do love it. Uh, I've been, let's see, teacher for oh, more than a little bit over a decade, everything from kindergarten. Yeah, kindergarten all the way to high school. But my jam is middle school. Uh, currently teaching seventh grade math. Uh, I do tons of other stuff on our campus, esports, coaching, cross country, audio and video club. Uh, that's by day, uh, by night. <laughs> Over the weekends, I uh, do a lot of freelancing, doing um, uh, live video streams and uh, recording of professional wrestling. Yes, professional wrestling. And the question I get all the time, like WWE, yeah, like the minor leagues, think of it that way. So, um, and every chance I get, I try to in, uh, bring in that tech into the classroom. So that's who I am. And a wow. total geek. You, you are, you do so much. Like, I don't even know how you keep up with all of that. Do I? <laughs> so let's just jump right in and let's talk about how you are blending in um, opportunities to cultivate these positive relationships with your students. So in thinking about creating that sense of community with or without um, technology, how do you do that? How do you blend in opportunities to build those positive relationships? And I'm wondering if some of your um, extracurricular activities might play a role in that. Uh, a little bit. I, I would say uh, for me, uh, I always I I try to always set this, the tone uh, at very first. So, so day one, there is no getting to know anybody. So a lot of the and that's the other thing I forgot to mention uh, background in the martial arts. So I've been studying Taekwondo a long time. So very long yeah. time. So I structure my class and I sometimes refer to it as my dojo. Uh, so I, I teach my students uh, that discipline to come into uh, into the classroom and learn, uh, you know, respect, responsibility, and most importantly, redemption. Mm. Uh, I go into discussing, and I know some of my colleagues uh, and others that I've worked with um, might not agree with me, but I tend to tell a lot of the stuff that I did wrong when I was younger. And okay. like, why would you say that? It's because I'm building that rapport with those kids so that they understand this kid that grew up in Southgate in, in near Watts, uh, Compton, who made a lot of mistakes, could turn things around. Uh, so I make myself vulnerable there. Uh, I love that. Uh, it, so that way the kids go, oh, I understand him. I can relate with him. Uh, yes. And actually, I came across that by accident at, at uh, another middle school um, when I first got hired. Uh, out by Palm Springs. It was the worst first year ever. Mm -hmm. uh, I I was trying to be someone who I wasn't. Um, I tried to be super professional. I'm Mr. Murrow and blah, blah. And then uh, they ate me up alive. Yeah. Uh, during my frustration period there, um, I did have, I kind of almost broke down. I just sat there going, oh my God. I And I was talking to myself and I go, oh my God, I've been shot at. I've been jumped uh, so much. And then one kid overheard me because I was giving up and she goes and she goes you used to say you almost got shot and I go yeah and then that opened up that that discussion mm -hmm. going yeah do you think all teachers have it to well yeah everybody yeah everybody knows that teachers have it easy and I'm going oh really so you're addressing some of those misconceptions and, I and go, also building the connections at the same time mm -hmm. um you and i kind of share a similar history um i i also had you know some rough few years yeah. um i also spent some time working in south central los angeles and one of the the biggest challenges that i faced was keeping my students engaged and motivated in doing the hard work of learning so what blended learning strategies are working best for you to keep your students engaged and motivated to work hard 
Okay. Well, uh, like I said, I started the blending learning, uh, and it all started with a podcast, believe it or not. I, Ooh. you know, I'm always looking for new ideas to bring into the classroom. Um, uh, COVID, uh, when we transitioned to that, uh, the computer based learning teaching, um, I was kind of a natural because of the podcasting and all that. So, but I was sure. never content. I was like, is there a way? And then, uh, cult of pod uh, pedagogy came, uh, there was a, a oh, Jennifer Gonzalez yes. from the cult of pedagogy. Mm -hmm. She is amazing. Yes. Yeah. And now I don't listen to all of them, but just I really focus on the ones that are tech. And there was one called the Modern Classroom. Mm -hmm. I follow that program and it's a self-paced program. Um, but um, currently I tried it last year. It, there were some issues, but um, I'm bringing parts of it back. I'm testing the waters again. Uh, but one of the things to keep engagement is uh, structure and yeah. also the video length. Uh, and uh, one of the things that I try it and still altering is the the video length and also making videos entertainment. Like I approached it in, as a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. So it, that was the difficult part because like, yes, we could all use screen castify and record our lectures and, but they, all the kids will see that with every one of their teachers. Oh, snooze fast. Oh my God. That's super boring. So I imp implemented other things from pro wrestling uh tools that i use for making music videos doing uh uh commercials for pro wrestling and use software where i integrated music better graphics and like my videos have an intro it, and they're super short so uh, i try to keep them as entertaining as possible so i mean granted it's math but uh that's kind of what i've been doing and i'll probably be editing some more just uh just to kind of uh, clean them up a little bit, but yeah, that's how I get the engagement. Keep them short, uh, entertaining because, um, and because that's what we have, you know, how many kids uh, have I had to stop trying to go on YouTube, you know? So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we know their attention span is very short and you have to get it within that first 30 seconds to a minute. Right. Yeah, and then please. keep them captivated. And also I, I think, I love how you said the length of the video is important. And that's something that I think we learned um, during the pandemic is like every grade level, like if they're a first grader, they can handle about a minute, right? If, exactly. <laughs> if they're like it's secondary students, you don't want to get into that, like beyond that 10 minute range because they're, they've completely tuned out and lost interest. Um, and I love that you're, you're, you're planning on ways that you can keep them engaged and also entertained while they're learning the concepts that you're trying to teach them in math. So I'm wondering, how do you plan for these type of activities? Like, and I know with time being a constraint for teachers, how do you, with such a limited amount of planning time, how, how are you able to do that? Uh, now it's actually easier. Last year, if you would have asked me, I, I said, I don't know how I'm even keeping up, uh, during, uh, that, <laughs> and it was a free training that I got. Um, I even went as far as, uh, paying for consultations. Cause I was mm -hmm. like, am I even doing this the right way? Cause I was, I was going to go for it. And I did. Um, so it's very structured. Uh, basically it's, uh, the, and the hardest part for me is getting used to not teaching in front of the class. That, that yeah. was very but it always starts with a video, a lecture. Then there would be some kind of practice where they get an opportunity to practice and then mastery. Mm. So that's that. And it was like those three key components. Uh, once again, lecture, video lecture, some kind of practice. And then the, at that practice, mastery. And then if they did not pass the mastery, they go back and rewatch video, other practices, uh, maybe a different intervention like uh, uh, Cahoots. Blue Kid is the main one right now. Everybody oh, Blue loves Kid, Blue yeah. Kid. Oh, that's great. <laughs> uh, but then what will happen is if the kid is able to show mastery, then they move on. So they're no longer being held uh, to slow down. So that's the part. The kids that struggled in that, um, and even during that phase, I was able to walk around um, those that were struggling those, and uh, sit one-on-one. -on -one. That was different, though. That's the part that I actually love, the opportunity to sit with a kid one-on-one -on -one and say, okay, this is where you're struggling with your practice. Did you take your notes? Did you watch the video? Oh, no, you didn't. Okay, go back to watching the video, then we'll talk. But that opportunity to walk around the class, uh, it was a different, um, it was different at first, uh, but it, it was really powerful when I did. Uh, so there were some issues with it, but uh, I am testing the waters currently with two of my classes and... Uh, Hoping to start that uh, with honors probably next week. And then in two weeks, the uh, one of my regular math classes. 
Awesome. I can't wait to hear how that goes. Um, you talked about uh, just how it like frees you up to be able to check in um, with those kids one-on-one. -on -one. Um, tell me a little bit more about that. Like how, how do you um, manage that? Like as far as like the behaviors and classroom interruptions and things like that, when you're operating a blended learning environment? Well, once again, like I said, um, with me, I always set that tone pretty hard at the very first. So that expectation is from day one. Whether Going back to the dojo respect. Yeah, yes. Yeah. They okay. know um, They know how I am. Uh, I'll just give them that that stare. Like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> the teacher look. The teacher, the, <laughs> some, people, some people even call it the death glare. Yes. <laughs> I don't yell at my students, but I just go, it's the, what are you doing look? You know, so usually um, <laughs> it was for me, it, it was more like, uh, keeping track of, uh, kids wandering. And so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very techie. So go guardians is, is great because then I could set all the scenes that I want very strict of where they want. Uh, so, um, redirection like that. And, and I would walk around and when I start up again, uh, walk around with the tablet and that way I keep a, a look at go, go guardian as I go along walking around. Uh, but basically, yeah, we yeah. are so, I feel like we're so fortunate in our district to even have that platform. And if for listeners who may not know, and who may be outside of, um, him at unified go guardian is a platform that allows our teachers to monitor what the students are doing on their, um, Chromebooks that they're using, um, during school hours. And so it's, it's really impactful for the teacher and it keeps all kinds of records and data, of what the kids have been perusing online in case you ever need to get back to a parent. So if you're a district leader um, in another district, I would highly encourage you to look into Go Guardian, purchasing Go Guardian for your teachers. I'm sure that probably has eliminated some of the challenges that you've experienced, John. Um, are there other challenges that you've experienced when trying to implement a blended learning environment? Uh, the other thing would be, it's like, I tried, I went full on last year when I came, uh, I was like, I, I've been planning this, uh, pre-recording videos. Uh, and because like I said, uh, what I learned from, um, the modern classroom, it, it's very structured, but mm -hmm. I tried to kind of mix it up so that, because it, I didn't want it to just, um, it's just to try to make one of the challenges to try to make it somewhat entertaining. So I didn't want it to only be a video, a worksheet, another worksheet. And that's it. So right. I tried to incorporate other programs. So I incorporated a couple other programs. Uh, Luca is probably going to be one of them. Mm. Uh, quizzes. Um, I'm also adding a few more things to that. So I'm currently working on a mind map of how I want this to flow because I'm a logistics guy. It, yeah. whether it's in the classroom or pro wrestling, it's all about the steps for me. Um, so part of that, I, I didn't think it was, they, the kids uh, were quite ready for, you know, it wasn't quite ready for prime time. It was close. I had kids that uh, would wander off. Uh, a lot of the issues that I also had is like um, their attention span. They were, they weren't quite ready yeah. after coming back from the, the pandemic. Um, they just didn't have the discipline to handle a self pace, even yeah. though um, I did have a system where I would project where they were in relation to other kids, not grades. I wouldn't never show the grades, but I would go, this kid is is behind. This kid is on track. And finally these kids are exceeding. Mm. So there was always a tracking. And then I would also call kids up at a time to see where, why they were stuck and yeah. uh, go from there. But it was mostly logistics for me uh, that became a problem. Um, after one point the uh, kids weren't watching the videos and I'm like, okay, what's going on? What's going on? But then, mm. um, I ended up switching to a regular traditional model, but they were doing the same thing with that too. So I was like, okay, uh, now I'm a little more hopeful because they had a year under their belt coming back from COVID, uh, the quarantine. And like I said, I'm going to try to test the waters because it can work. And the, the ability to be able to sit with a kid one-on-one, -on -one, which I did experience during that period of time, uh, was really, really impactful. It was yeah. like, it was just the only thing I, like I said, on the other challenge is trying to get, through my mind, like, oh my God, I almost feel like I'm cheating here. Yeah. yeah. That was the part I was like, it's so dumb. It's like, I spent hours recording all these, these videos and they're all on my YouTube channel, but they're all, it took hours of it. But then I'm still saying, this is cheating, Meryl. This is cheating. I don't know why, because <laughs> I'm so like, you have to stand in front of the class. You got to yeah. give notes. You They are writing Cornell notes. And it's just like, that was for me, the hardest part too, is getting yeah. that, that different method. So.
Well, you know, Catlin Tucker is is one of the advocates for blended learning, right? And she's always um, saying, if you're going to repeat the same thing six times throughout your day, why not use video? Like it makes sense. And then it frees you up to be able to interact with kids in your classroom. And from what I've, um, I would have been getting from your, um, the way you've approach from blended learning in the past is you, you, it sounds like you're using more of a playlist model. Um, have you tried a station rotation model where you have kids working, um, in maybe groups, one group working in like a playlist, one group working on a, a collaborative project, and then you're working maybe with a group as a, a teacher led station. And if you haven't, um, is that something you think about trying? Um, I've, I'm kind of, has intended of, of that in middle school. Uh, I, know some, I mean, <laughs> understandable, I, I understandably. Got, I got the best. I, and I'm not because I really had to work really, really hard to get my classroom management skills. And I feel like that's one of my strong points. It's that class, there's no yelling. There's none of that. It's just uh, I rarely write referrals. I rarely because there's that respect in the classroom. Um, yeah. So uh, that's kind of the one that I'm hesitant because like, um, I used to try things like that. Um, it just it always backfired. And now with the current system that I do have is uh, and I'm gonna once again testing the water. So ideally is once a kid is moving in this uh in this system, they could once I generate that report, like these kids are the ones that are in this section. This is who you can sit by. So if you want, so I'm willing to try that. Like, okay, so the ones that are in this section, you could all group over there. Those yeah. kids that are here, they can move so they could, uh, you know, sit and, and support each other. So, um, so unfortunately, I'm not a big fan of uh, stations. I, I've tried it, um, even though I feel like I have very, really strong. It look, I usually tend to deal with more like we're going to hang around with our friends and we're going to talk around and not yeah. focus. So, um, I mean, I I totally feel you on that. Like it managing the middle school classroom um, with a station rotation, even when there's not technology involved, is yeah, super challenging. Exactly. And you definitely have to um, communicate very clear expectations for what the kids are doing at each station and what the expectation is for them to produce at the end. Mm -hmm. um, but I appreciate that you're willing to like, keep trying and figuring out different ways to make something work and, and not just giving up completely and saying, okay, I can't, yeah. I can't make this work, but yeah. like trying a different way. I think that's awesome. It's very admirable. Of you. Yeah. Well, like I said, I'm going to try something different. Uh, the other thing is uh, uh, I do give them a deadline. So mm -hmm. they do, it is self-paced. I, so I'll say, you know, like unit two, you have chapter one, you have to get through that in, you know, whatever, four weeks, five weeks. And then after that, that's when, you know, I'm going to try uh, doing the collaboration piece during a uh, collaborative study group so that they get ready for the actual chapter test. Yeah. So, it'll be, you know, so there'll be some blending in that, that techniques and some of the old stuff and just kind of making it all fit yeah. some. So. <laughs> um, I love that. And, and, and just thinking about too, knowing that you you're teaching general education math, but you also have, um, special education students in your classroom, you have English learners in your classroom. So how are you, um, blending in, um, that element of literacy for those kids who are struggling, um, with learning or with learning a language in your class? Yeah. So uh, one of the things, like I said, I'm testing the waters because that was the part that I love. So my videos, I was able to for my EL kiddos uh, because I was an ESL student way back in the day. So I understand yeah. uh, that struggle. Uh, yeah. I only spoke Spanish when I was a kid. Um, I just picked up English pretty quickly because I would watch a lot of TV. So uh, they removed me out of there. But um, uh, I was able to do uh, closed captioning. So they could read it. And uh, with the blended learning method, they could take their, their sweet time. They had more time instead of right now. Like I said, right now, I'm just kind of testing the water for all my classes. Right now, it's very traditional. They're writing their notes. Uh, but my hope is that all my classes by, the, you know, hopefully by after Christmas time, they're all in the blended learner. So I'm like I said, but that's the main thing that sold me to blended learning because it is self-paced. Uh, it gives the kids uh, the opportunity to, you know, do things slower. And then it would, uh, once again, um, I could help them one-on-one. -on -one. And especially being a Spanish speaker, I could help with that too. So um, 
uh, I'm optimistic this year. So like I said, uh, I'm going to, I'm testing the water. So if it goes, um, I'm going to, and whatever results I get, I will definitely be talking to my co uh, co-teacher and saying, Hey, do you want to try it again? Because yeah. I think there's value in that. So I, I might have to have you back again, like at the end of the year <laughs> to give us like sure. an update on how it went <laughs> this year with the different things that you tried. Um, a couple of things you mentioned, you mentioned um, several different platforms that you've utilized um, with blended learning models, like look it, or even using screencastify to record. And so um, I know for, for a lot of people out there, um, we know that technology is ever evolving and constantly changing and constantly updating. So how do you stay up to date on the best tools and platforms to utilize with your students um, in your content area with math? Uh, it's kind of a weird one because I'm, I'm naturally just curious about technology since um, I mentioned or uh, on my uh, bio that I, you know, my love for technology was when I burnt my first Atari 2600 because <laughs> I wanted to fix it. Uh, for those that are, you know, like wondering, well, where do you go? Uh, YouTube, 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 <laughs> YouTube. Uh, so uh, New Tech Ed is a good one. Uh, they talk slow. And uh, I came across that uh, by accident, just like the cult of pedagogy. Yeah. Uh, uh, they talk a lot about tech in the classrooms and one of them, I believe is a middle school teacher in Texas. So that one's a really good one. Um, and honestly, sometimes it's just me being dork going in the classroom going, I wonder if there's a program that will do this. Like just recently, I'm looking for <laughs> something to have a better agenda board where it, get, it allows me to add more things instead of just Google, um, Google slides. Yeah. So it usually starts with like a need and going, okay, is there something that will make it my job easier? Yeah. Currently with the blended learning, um, I'm, I utilize Google classroom, but is I'm thinking, is there something better that will, you know, streamline the process? So, you know, so I, I played around with a program called Delta math, which would allow me to embed videos. Um, yeah. I, I went as geeky as opening up my, uh, starting up my own server, uh, a virtual server, uh, Linode.com and starting my own LMS, uh, learning management system, uh, um, testing on modal by myself, uh, just weird stuff like that. So, uh, but honestly, just, I, um, YouTube is what I usually, you know, you can find a lot there. Yeah, so, I, I agree. There's lots of tutorials out there and podcasts and all kinds of things, webinars, um, but you said something um, that I think is important, and that is to stay curious. Um, yeah. yeah, just keep learning and and know that um, you're never going to know everything no. and no. all there is to know about the technology. Like no one's ever going to know everything. So just staying curious. And then the other thing you said was efficiency. Like you were looking for things that weren't going to make things easier for you. Um, and also easier for your students, right? Like yeah. you don't want something that's overly complicated and no. difficult to deal with. So I love that so much. So let's circle back. You said you had um, a really rough first year. So in thinking about that, what is something that you wish you would have known in your first year as a teacher? Just be myself. Not yeah. pretend to be somebody who is something else. Um, because that for me was game changing. The, I turned those kids from hating me to being part of, you know, uh, an amazing experience. Uh, at the time, unfortunately, admin didn't agree uh, with the way I, I would talk to my students because I have, I tend to have more of a family way of talking with the kids, more of a coach mentality way of talking yeah. to them now. Um, and uh, also the fact that I was starting to share some of my my things that I, I went through as a kid, the good, the bad, and some of the very ugly. Yeah. And, um, but just to just be myself, if because they saw right through me. Yeah. They go, this guy. <laughs> this they guy, know. I don't know who you are. No, 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 no. They know so, when you're faking it, right? Yeah. And I was totally <laughs> trying to be super professional faking because I was trying, you know, it's my first year. I was nervous. Yeah. I want to make sure admin liked me. And I had to make sure that I had all the uh, certain, um, you know, what was the term they kept uh, telling me about? Like, you need to make sure that you're talking. Oh, like they wanted you to be like super professional. Yeah, yeah. extremely. And I'm going, that's not who I am. Not this, who you are. I'm yeah. a kid from the barrio. I mean, <laughs> I can't. I mean, yeah. so I would bring, you know, I'm not saying that I won't use uh, uh, 
the vocabulary. I'm, I'm of course I'm going to go, you know, you know, uh, isolating the variable that kind of, I'm great, but it, with a little Latin flair, you know, cause that's yeah. why. So, uh, yeah. So that would have been the big one. Uh, just be myself because once I became myself, those kids, like seriously, they want 180. Yeah. And then hate all me. Um, you know, then- I feel like that worked for me too. Um, when I was in the classroom, yeah. I, I was just who I was just my yeah. genuine self. And, yeah. and I always had pretty good connections with my kiddos and that made it a little bit easier to try to get them to do the hard things that I was asking them to do exactly in the classroom. Yeah, no, seriously, that one. And then the other one uh, that I, and I still do to this day, just look for their interests. Yeah. Just sometimes you could just, just by noticing something um, at that, with that class that didn't like me at first in my first year, I brought up one girl, she absolutely hated me, but I noticed that she liked anime. And I pointed, I was like, oh, you like Attack on Titan? And she looked at me and he's like, how do you know about that? I go, <laughs> how do you know about that? So, um, and even in my roughest kids who uh, who had had a lot of discipline issues, uh, I knew the kid was a mechanic. And I go, sometimes we'll go in there and go, hey, so-and-so, how do I fix this? Give me some advice. And he would look at me like, why are you asking me? Aren't you the mechanic guy? So starting those relations, those discussions, because all of a sudden, he was willing to talk, even though he hated my guts at first. But then at one point that relationship established and I'm like, ah, oh, he's, he's good. He's good. So, uh, I wish I would have, you know, tried that sooner, but yeah. So, yeah. So there you go. I love that. And I think I probably already know the answer to this question based on just hearing you talk today, but I'm going to let this be, um, the final question for the day, but what is the best part of teaching for you? Man, for me, it's that interaction with the kid. When and I know the analogy of the light bulb going up, but it's also the relationships that that, that you you, yeah. you get. For me, um, I feel like I'm paying it forward. Uh, yeah. For me, uh, someone took a chance with me. Um, I had kid teachers in LA, LA Unified. Um, they would say, Juan, one day you're going to be you're going to be arrested. You're you're not going to succeed in life whatsoever. And. Yeah. Um, so, but there was a few, three teachers that I still, I, and I even tell this story to my kiddos in my classes, Mr. Gropak, uh, uh, an ex-Marine who just make me run laps and laps and laps because he was just like, but he was the greatest guy ever. Uh, Mr. Wren, uh, my math teacher, kind of looked like Mr. Uh, Ferguson from Up, <laughs> just really sarcastic. And uh, yeah, and Mr. Dalen, which was the only guy of color at the time in LA Unified. Uh, just yeah. super good people. And they gave me, they, they took a chance on me and uh, yeah, I appreciate that. So I say that to my kids, even the ones that get into trouble, I said, you're, I'm giving you a chance yeah. whether you like it or not. <laughs> so anyway, so, but yeah. I love that so much, John. Well, thank you so much for being a guest on the podcast. I was so happy to be able to chat with you today and I'm, and, and just hearing um, your love for the classroom and the kids and what you do to connect with them and create that family dojo atmosphere. Yeah. And I, I appreciate your, um, your willingness to go and dive deep into blended learning, even though it comes with challenges. Like I just admire that so much. So thank you so much for being no, here. No, I appreciate that. Thank you for the, uh, I mean, I'm pretty stoked. That I was like, you want to ask me? Cool. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> got a total nerd, but whatever. Well, I, I'm going to hit you back up in the spring and we're going to see how things have gone this year. So (laughs) thanks for listening to the blending in podcast. I hope you gleaned some inspiration from Mr. Murrow to stay curious and keep blending in ed tech. You can find show notes and resources from today's episode on our website, blendinginpodcast.com. If you loved what you heard today, leave a review and hit the subscribe button to get notified when new episodes are dropped. Also, follow us on social media and use hashtag blending in podcast to add to the conversation. Until next time, don't hesitate to innovate and integrate.